على الكتاب والسنة واتباع السلف الصالح Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Brothers and sisters in Islam Welcome back to another episode of Discussions This is your brother Abu Sumeya And today I'm joined with Akhi Abu Taymiyyah How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, thank you Alhamdulillah, it's really nice to have you today To discuss a few things, some important things One of the things I wanted to touch up upon on today was You gave a lecture not long ago A little bit earlier And we spoke about Well rather you spoke about the heart yeah. and you also touched upon things that affect the heart and uh, the window to the heart so to speak is the eyes and what we look at yeah, I'm sorry. and you mentioned about the mobile phone how how dangerous this is in this day and age if not used in the right or the wrong way so I mean just, just explain a little bit about that Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al anbiya wal mursaleen Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathiran amma ba'd uh, dear respective brothers and sisters, uh, this is a very prevalent uh, disease that has currently not just the Muslims have been hit by, but rather even you find that some of the non-Muslims, rather a lot of the non-Muslims are also suffering from. And we find that in the religion of Islam, uh, there are certain things that have been made prohibited for us, which could eventually lead to us being destroyed in this dunya and likewise in the akhirah as well. You find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He has told us to lower our gaze. Ali ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, He tells us about lowering the gaze. غض البصر أصل أصيل في حفظ القلب. It is from the biggest of foundations and the main ones that allow a person to safeguard his heart. Because we know if our heart becomes corrupted, everything else becomes corrupted and we will eventually become destroyed in this dunya and likewise the akhirah. Came in the hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir radiallahu ta'ala an when he said, Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudgah. There's a piece of flesh in a person's body. Either fasadat, fasad al jasadu kullu. If that becomes corrupted, everything else becomes corrupted. Wa ida salaha salaha al jasadu kullu, ala wa hiya al And if that becomes rectified, everything else becomes rectified. And this is the heart. We shouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden now, things that we used to be shy about previously, that we are now doing in the open. Okay? I'm sure there has been times in our life where we used to be scared to do things in front of the public, like in front of our parents, uh, in front of our friends. But now we just go and do this, you know, perfectly normally without any issues. And this again, it goes back to the heart having become corrupted. And now it's being projected by the limbs, okay, projected onto the limbs. So, uh, like I mentioned before, yani these eyes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted to us, and I say it's a gift because my brothers and sisters, Allah Azza wa could easily remove that, okay? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَذَهَبَ بِسَمْعِهِمْ وَأَبْصَارِهِمْ If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed, He would have, you know, just removed our sight. Uh, he would also remove our hearing, okay? Uh, and there's people who don't have that. So we've been gifted by it and we need to actually safeguard it by, Absolutely. Uh, you know, really Absolutely. looking after it. Well, here's, and, here's a point you made. Um, you know, there's, there's sins that we do publicly and we have no shame for doing it um, in this day and age. But there's certain sins that people do in private. Okay. And that's always been the case. Um, um, but there's certain things that people do on private when no one's looking um, and they're on their own. And I'm talking about the dangers of pornography and so forth. Okay. okay, you know, the phone opens up, you know, we could be walking down the street and a man's natural inclination, despite what agenda people try to push, is, a, is an attraction to women and vice Sahih. versa. Yeah. Okay. And this is the biggest fitna of the men. Exactly. It's As their the weakness. Said. Yeah. yeah. So, but on the street though, you can always look away. Yeah. And generally speaking, how many, you know, women are you going to look at? before you actually actively start reminding yourself that you're outside and other people are watching you as well no. you know just other than Allah but at home when you're on your own and you're in your bedroom mm. and for you know for many I'm not even talking about the, the elder generation but for the younger generation who are not married every advert that you come across has no. some type of it's like sexual, sexual exactly no. so how does a person deal with that? Okay, uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, again, يعني, it's this bellow of the phone. Okay, a lot of it now, uh, 
a lot of it now yeah, is being used on people's phones okay before uh, they had to go into the computer yeah. and the computer is what in the living room everybody sits in the living room so it was a bit more difficult and you know the shaitan is always working and trying to make haram much easier for the people okay even subhanallah the poet he says uh, uh, I have been, uh, started disliking the internet until I became so tight inside. A person, this is exactly what the internet does. Not only because he wastes his time, because the poet later on he says this, okay, because he wastes so much time. You know, sometimes we find ourselves surfing, we see one video after the other on the recommended list, and it just ends up wasting so much time. That's one thing. That which is more greater is this is one of the biggest means that destroys a person's heart. Why? You look at one thing, it leads to another. It looks and another and another and another. Okay? And if we're going to do something about it, yani it only makes sense that we kind of further ourselves away uh, from this mobile phone. Okay? I remember subhanAllah, Sheikh Abdul Karim Al Khudair was one of the major scholars uh, in Saudi Arabia. He's also in the Legend of the Daim, in the Executive Committee of Giving Fatawa. Uh, he used to have these rubbish phones, you know, these 10 pound, 20 pound phones. I don't know what they call it. You know, the ones we used to have back in the day. Uh, it doesn't have, some of them have color and some of them don't. Well, this day and age, it's a trap phone. A trap phone? I don't know what that means. Yeah. Drug dealers use it. <laughs> this day and age. That's well, a reality, that's, isn't it? That's very true, yeah. That's very true. So, anyways, he used to have this phone, and then all of a sudden, he, uh, he bought these smartphones and he, he himself is telling this uh, story because just randomly all of a sudden and I've seen this it happens normally on VPN 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 I don't know if you don't know we in Saudi we use VPN we switch it on uh, in order to be able to use the WhatsApp calling okay so anyways to cut a very long story short the Sheikh was saying all of a sudden when he moved onto the smartphone just randomly he ended up seeing a picture of uh, a woman who was exposing herself he goes I ended up leaving and I went back to my trap phone okay let's not call it a trap phone <laughs> whatever you want to call it <laughs> <laughs> to all these uh, random phones so anyways like for a person to actually realize that this is an issue that's the first step and then he needs people around him to be helping him okay so uh, by maybe getting rid of this phone from you know the early stages so a person becomes detox what do they call it okay like a I detox mean, it's easy to say get rid yeah. of your phone but yeah. the phones are just not a phone this day and age look mm. we've got social media on the phone yeah? yeah we've got emails on the phone yeah people take use the phone to make videos and you know and whatnot so the, the phone now is everywhere no. it's too late to get rid of it now no. it's, it's never gonna leave no I'm saying for a fir for a, for a period of time yeah until an individual's immune system becomes free of this sickness that he's suffering from because it's an addiction now. Yeah. People are suffering from an addiction. People want to leave it. I've seen even practicing brothers who have emailed me previously and uh, they were suffering from it. That means you have to kind of like cut every means that is leading you to uh, haram. Yani this haram thing. Like a drug dealer now. Okay. You have to try it. Why do they go into this? Uh, what do they call it? They go into this... Uh, uh, what do they call it when they go into uh, detox? Rehab. Okay? Rehab, that's the word I was looking for. They go into rehab and they're in this house for like 30, 40 days or even more than that. And all the wasail, the means that gets them back into drugs are cut off from them. Mm -hmm. And this is not anything different. You're addicted, they're addicted over there and he's addicted to this. So if you're telling me now, you're addicted to watching pornography and it's on your phone, it only makes sense that you go far away from it. You see my point? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that you totally cut yourself off on the phone, but if you truly want to change and rid this from your habits, you would have to get far away from that phone. Okay, so that's something that an indi individual person can do. Try to lock off the phone yeah. uh, and, and guard their eyes and, and so forth. No. What can society do? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? No. no. Families, what, what can they do? Okay, because uh, you know when you look at the issue of pornography, a lot of the reason as to why somebody might turn to pornography is because he wants to fulfill his desire. We as human beings, uh, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he made a partner for another partner, mm -hmm. the husband for the wife. And one of the 
uh, you know, things that come out of marriage is for a person to be able to fulfill his desire. Because especially you were living in a very sexual society where everywhere you look, you find the opposite gender being uh, used as sexual objects. And us living and seeing this all the time, يعني, the heart begins to crave this as well. Okay, it affects the heart. Like looking around you all the time when you see this, of course, the heart bit blackens. You know, a dot after a dot, as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa told us, look at it, look at it, so that a black dot gets placed on a person's heart until it becomes so black and it becomes covered. And لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا. يعني everything starts becoming normal for that person. Okay, uh, a couple of years ago, I remember Canadians from Canada. They emailed me. Where else would Canadians be from? <laughs> okay, Canadians. Canadians. <laughs> Okay, brothers from Canada, brothers from Canada, uh, they emailed me and they told me that there was a very big fitna in Canada. And this fitna was uh, practicing brothers, wanting to get married, wanting now to fulfill the other half of their religion. Okay, And that's something khair. Today we find a lot of youngsters, even our sisters, at the age of 19, 20, saying, oh, I'm not ready to get married. Even brothers saying, I'm not ready to get married. So if we have a youngster now who's wanting to protect himself from zina, okay, uh, and he wants to now fulfill the objective, one of the objectives that the Al-Islam came with, which is to uh, get married, okay, uh, in order for a person to protect his religion. As the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ya ayyuha shabab O shabab O youngsters, Man istata'a minkum al faliyatazawwaj. Whoever amongst you is able to get married, let this person get married for indeed it is better for the eyes. It helps him, you know, lower his gaze and it also protects his private part. And this individual now who, you know, watches pornography, he's not necessarily protecting his private part because what? He's fulfilling his desire. So the point is, they emailed me saying that there's practicing brothers. They've got beards. They've got thopes. Okay. They want to get married. But the parents now are making things very very difficult not in any way am I um, uh, trying to justify the sin that they are falling into at all okay of course you can't necessarily blame someone else in totality they're trying to get married and parents are telling them you need to have a degree or you need to or both of them actually you need to have a degree and you need to have twenty thousand dollars as well okay so a youngster like this who is trying to protect himself you tell him bring up twenty thousand we know Abu Sumeya, um, we're living in a society where it's very difficult to accumulate money like that. Of course it is. I mean, uh, yeah. I think you hit, hit the nail on the head when it comes to the families making it difficult. Yeah. Families make it very difficult. Sometimes for the right reasons, meaning mm. there's some good reasons involved, but it's overshadowed by culture and bad reasons. No. Yeah, There's nothing wrong with you know making sure that the daughter marries a, a righteous right person, man. Yeah. He has yeah. good lineage. So he, you know, uh, He's an upright, moral person. He has a good job he can prov provide for. Yeah, of course. Of course but then there's going to an extreme, making sure that even if someone fits that category, but no, you keep adding stipulations, stipulations, stipulations. Some families actually see it to be belittling for their daughter to go out of the house, to leave the home and get married. Uh, and the mahar is really, really low. You know, you know about mahar. Yeah. When I was uh, in Saudi and I come across uh, a, a man he must have been in his mid 30s mm -hmm. i think he was originally from afghanistan but he'd been i think he was born in saudi raised there and everything like that and uh, the issue or the topic of marriage come up because um, we, we were shopping and he, mm -hmm. and he worked in the shop and uh, he said he wasn't married and all of a sudden i scratched my head i was like yeah in saudi how can yeah. you be 30 plus years old and not married now brothers and sisters you got to realize something we're talking about the desires that human beings are made with. Every guy has a likes girl, a girl, and every girl likes a guy. Guy, of course. Yeah. Okay, that's the natural Sahih. way of life. And, is, and there's nothing wrong with there's it. There's nothing wrong, there's with, nothing that, wrong okay? with it. Yeah, it's not a taboo. So issue. when you see yeah. a, um, a grown man, yeah, and he's not married, don't forget we're thinking the good of a person. Either that person's doing something haram, zina, yeah. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Why yeah. would you logically not be married? There's yeah. no such thing as I'm not ready. But do you, do you not ready to... to mm. Do you not want a woman? Do you not want a man? No, it, it definitely is a and very big issue. And he yeah. said to me, mm. it was an issue about money. You know what? Come to my mind. Yeah. You know, brothers and sisters, this is just a topic about how we can do things to better yourself, right? 
I was thinking if I was in that situation, may Allah protect me. Mm. That there's poor women. So ya akhi, I've been with some of the oh. teachers that teach in Masjid Nabawi. Yeah. I've been with them and they're taking me by the hand and we've gone and he's shown me the widows. And some of them are young women. Yeah. You know, they have and they, they give them zakat, they give them rations, you know, bag of onions, yeah, bag of yeah. potatoes, bag of carrots. Uh, <coughs> and this is what this, this sheikh does. May Allah preserve him. And I was thinking, why would you not marry one of them? So this is a double standard now. He is finding his, what he wants to get married, the woman he wants to marry, the family making difficult. But he's not looking to the other alternative. Mm-hmm. What, just because she's poor? Wallahi, that poor marriage is a halal marriage. Sahih. And you wouldn't be in the situation you're in. And Allah knows best what, at the end of the day, your desires lead you to sin. Sahih. Your desires lead you to masturbation. Your desires lead you to pornography. Your desires need, lead you to zina. And so forth. Mm. So just maybe going back to that point where, uh, you know, pertaining, uh, making marriage really, really difficult. Uh, SubhanAllah, if we just like stand over the statement of the best of creation, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He mentioned something and SubhanAllah, you can take a lot uh, out of it. He said in a hadith, uh, Whoever comes to you and you're satisfied with his religion, okay, and you also see that he has good conduct, good mannerism, then get him married off. Either that you do this, otherwise there will be such a big corruption on the face of this earth. What is this corruption that we're currently seeing now? Wallahi, our parents, you know, this is like a humble, sincere advice from your, uh, from your son, from your child. Uh, I don't think you don't know what's going on with the youngsters. Because if, that's, if that was the case, then I don't think we would make marriage difficult for them. Okay, they won't necessarily tell you this because it doesn't make sense for a child to come and tell his mother, uh, even the sister telling her mother, Oh, I'm addicted to pornography, I watch pornography, and this is how I fulfill my desires. Okay, and this is so prevalent, it is widespread more than what we can even imagine. You'll be surprised the amount of correspondence that I receive, and some of them are even practicing, they really want to uh, fulfill their desires in a halal way, but they end up becoming addicted to it. Okay, and, 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 and like I said earlier, and I'm going to reiterate this, not in any way am I putting the, the full blame on the parents, but it is an issue. Them, you know, obviously falling into the haram is a problem and they are going to be held to account. But us making, you know, really hard uh, is a very big problem. And then later on, we begin to regret. When now he goes and has a haram relationship and she gets pregnant, this is when I realize the parents, they rush in order to stop shame coming to the family. How many times have I seen a family marrying them both off after she became pregnant? She was saying no, 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 no. The mother or the dad is saying no. Later on, they end up having a haram relationship or behind closed doors, they do zina. And some of them, they, they know the only time the parents are going to get them married off is if he impregnates her. So he uses that as an opportunity in order what to get married to her. You see, and the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he did say uh, to say to us, خير الصداق أيسره. As it came in the hadith uh, of عقبة ibn Amr radiyallahu taala, the best type of mahar is that which is the most easiest. And just because you know people are going to look down on you, wallahi, we don't necessarily care about the people. Yes, they will look down, but which one is a uh, uh, a bigger matter that brings contention and pleases Allah subhanahu wa taala most? People just talking maybe for a couple of months saying, oh, that the wedding was or the food wasn't necessarily nice because we decided to make things really easy for our younger uh, children. Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being pleased. And through that, maybe righteous children can come out that were born in a halal way. You see? So, Brothers and sisters, it's, it's just to conclude really, yeah. the phone can either lead you to good or evil Sahih. and there's far more evil out there than perhaps good no. but you have to safeguard yourselves you have to safeguard your eyes uh, and we're not angels that are sitting here obviously we make mistakes and we sin and we have our own problems but for you brothers and sisters who have problems and issues you gotta find the halal alternative you gotta do things in the right way no. And if it means having more patience, 
until that halal thing comes your way, do it. It's the fast, like for example, the fast. You know, really, and it's like a form of castration. Uh, you use the word normally castrate for animals. Okay, what they tend to do is sometimes in order to stop them from having children, they would castrate them, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what the siyam does. There's a hikam behind it. What the siyam does, and Ibn Taymiyyah he talks about this. Uh, he says that when a person is fasting, it reduces the blood that is running through a person's blood vein. Okay, uh, and the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what did he say to us? Inna shaytan yajri min ibn Adam dam. The shaytan it runs through the bloodstream of an individual just like his blood runs through his body okay so now when your blood is being reduced the shaitan he has uh, uh, a, a more thinner reduced place to be able to run through of course okay of course. and you can see as well like a person he tends to feel much much weaker uh, that desire doesn't seem to be there when a person is fasting okay if uh, you can't fast the Siyam of Dawood, which is the best type of fasting, fasting one day missing and one missing day. one day. Okay, and yeah, I mean, this is maybe a very good place to start. It's a very good place to start. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good precaution to take no. because when, you're in, when you indulge in things that you know you shouldn't be looking at no. or doing, then you, you can't progress in your religion. No, I'm sorry. You know, you think, why yeah. can't I memorize? SubhanAllah. Yeah. You've got to look at the yeah, sins. Yeah, yeah. Why can't I do this? You got, why can't I... Have a good Ramadan. No, I'm, sorry. I'm hearing these stories of the Salaf. They used to do this. They used to pray like this. They used to recite X amount of Quran and understand X amount of Quran. Why mm. can't I do it? You know, Subhanallah, Ibn Al Qayyim, Rahimullah Taala, in his Kitab Al Dawa Al Dawa. Okay, it is called the uh, medicine and the sickness, or the cure and the sickness, however you want to translate it. He mentions, uh, from what I remember, 24 points of bad effects of sins. Okay, and this point that you just mentioned was the first point that he started with. Really? That when a person can't memorize, when he's trying to seek knowledge and the knowledge doesn't seem to be going in, that's the first point that he mentioned, Hirmanul Ilm. And you know, brothers and sisters, when we look at the sins and the effects that he has on our life, in our dunya, and likewise in the akhirah, yani this is like also a step that will allow a person to really uh, go far away from the sins that he's indulging in. Okay? Like, for example, he. Uh, mentions the example of Imam Shafi Taala when he sat in front of Imam Malik. Imam Malik Taala became shocked of how intelligent he was, okay, and how sharp and how uh, immense his understanding was. He said to him, "Inni ara anna Allah Subhanahu wa Taala khad alqa fi qalbi kanura, fala tufi ha bi zulmat al maasi." I see that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has placed a light in your heart. Do not extinguish the light with the darkness of sinning. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Okay. Uh, also, you know, Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala, he complained to Waqi'. Waqi' was an individual. He was his teacher who was a, a hafid who was really, uh, you know, immense when it came to memorization. Even one time, an individual, he said to him, um, uh, he went to Waqi' and he said to him, what is the, uh, m the cure for memorization or forgetting? What is the cure for constantly forgetting? Because they never used to see Waqi' carrying a book. It was all memorization. He said to him, if I was to tell you now, are you going to implement it? He goes, eh, wallahi, I will, I will do that. So he said to him, Tarku al-ma'asi, ma jarrabtu mithlahu qat. Leaving of sins, I haven't tried anything like it. And also my brothers, like how can you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without ilm? You have to be seeking ilm. And you can only do that by seeking knowledge, right? To be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You am going to do that. Uh, you're in the middle of a battle. Wallahi, Akhi Abu Sumaya, I've seen brothers who, uh, you know, mashallah, they were given a tawfiq to go to Al Medina. They are in the middle of a battle of addiction. Okay? Some of them, I remember one time a brother, he sat, he sat away, he said he's still in a relationship. He was relatively new. Uh, may Allah Azza wa Jal help him. I mean, uh, he was in, still in a relationship and he was struggling. There were, there's brothers that I met that were struggling to go to the haram. These were relatively new. Okay? They were struggling to go, and this is exactly what the sins does. It uh, it ties a person up. It restricts you. It, it imprisons you. It stops you from doing khair. And there's so many that I can go on. Inshallah, uh, maybe you can find this on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's a part two. The effects of sins taken from the Kitab of Ibn Al-Qaim, Rahimallahu Taala. We could easily go through it now, but uh, I think we're trying to tackle a certain yeah. uh, topic at this moment in time. Uh, even Imam Shafi Rahimallahu Ta'ala has got some lines of poetry where he said, Shakotu ila wakia in suha ibn fa arshadani la tarkil ma'asi. 
فاخبرني بان العلم نور ونور الله لا يهدى لعاصي اي كومبلينت وكيع بيكوز اوف مي هافينج يو نو اي لوس اوف ميمورايزيشن اند هي تول مي تو ليف اوف سينز هي نيفر سيت هيم او يو اولد او يو نو ان شاء الله دونت وري اباوت ات هي سيت هيم ستي اواي فروم سينز ذس امام الشافعي رحمه الله تعالى هو سم تايمز هاد تو كفر ون سايد بيكوز هيز ميمورايزيشن واز سو جود بيكوز هي واز مودلينج اب وذ ذا اذر سايد اوف ذا بيج ذاتس هاو جود هيز ميمورايزيشن واز هي هاز تو كفر ون ان اوردر تو بي ايبل تو ميمورايز ذس اكوردنجلي يو نو You know, brothers uh, and sisters, it's yeah. uh, very important that you a understand that whatever you're indulging in in these types of things, pornography and so forth, you know, pornography and masturbation, that you know, obviously linked. Then first know that it's haram, and know that it can never benefit you. Rather, it only harms you in the spiritual aspect and in the physical aspect no, as well. Sorry. If you ever get married later, you're gonna have problems. Yeah, exactly. The the not only uh, you know will an individual have an issue with. Uh, being able to fulfill the desires of his wife okay uh, read between the lines uh, and the other issue is what tends to happen is and I've looked into this as well okay an individual is attracted to his wife in the beginning and for many years he is then all of a sudden he loses attraction to her why because he's constantly thinking of all these women that are fake women fake women they're not real yeah. they don't exist <laughs> like that <laughs> only in Jannah <laughs> No, yeah, I mean, they, 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 they watch pornography and obviously when, when they make pornography they're not going to uh, bring you an unattractive lady. Do you see what I'm saying? You know, you, yeah. you mentioned... We were talking so about he loses this. attraction to yeah. his wife. 100%. And what ends yeah. up happening, you know, uh, pornography mm. is like most addictions where the need for it mm. grows and, and it changes. So, like for example, if someone st- no one starts off as an alcoholic. No. Something leads him there. Different types of drink leave him there, lead him there. No. Different types of alcohol, spirits, whatever, lead him to that position. Sahih. And no one ends up as a crackhead or a heroin yeah. addict overnight. You know, overnight. Sahih. Something leads him there, whether it be smoking, then weed, then so forth. And no one ends up as a pedophile. Sahih. And that brings me to yeah. that. And that I, I wanna, yeah. before, you, before you get onto that, <laughs> and I just want to drive that point home. No, reason like, why. Yeah. Allah did not create man in this way, huh. mankind, to have this disgusting, rapist kind of no, desire, no. right? And if you, even if you watch some of these uh, programs, they come on TV and that where they expose them. These people say, when they ask, why do you like you know, children of a, under a certain age? And they said, we don't know. I never used to be like this. Mm-hmm. True, you never used to. That's true. What led you to that? Sorry. You know, in the genres of pornography are so many... Animals, incest, incest pornography. Oh, I didn't even know there was that. Incest yeah. pornography, uh, and you look at some of these, you know, uh, sodomy and all of this sort of stuff. Yeah. These are these become genres. Why? Because a person needs more, and he needs more, and he needs more, and until the heart is so black, then you know what these people do. We read the we read the articles, you know, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. If you fall into this sin. Shaitan will wrap you up as, as, as he's wrapped up those people, those sick people that we have seen. So the main thing is safeguard yourself because it can be a very dangerous slope yeah. and be patient and wait for the halal option and parents and family members, siblings and friends. Yo, I'm going to say it like this. If Abu Bakr gave his daughter to his best friend and Umar gave his daughter to his best friend, Yeah. And the Prophet being the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave his daughters to his friends closest uh, Uthman, people now and Ali who was a relative why can't one best friend give to his other best friend his sister so, hey, not that it, he owns her but rather it's a re- recommendation yeah, and it's also k- kind of like the uh, the society the way they think and they move okay they sometimes feel it's a bit embarrassing to go and offer your daughter no umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was he offered his daughter to who to abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu initially and then later on you know they didn't want to do anything why because uh, uh, they knew that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yani was thinking about hafsa radiyallahu ta'ala anha okay and going back to the other point subhanallah when he was talking about it led on to something you know a, a pedophile or a rapist never just became a rapist Uh, overnight Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned something very powerful he said an-nadharu uh, baridu al-jima' okay sorry an-nadharu baridu zina wa kama anna al-qublata 
بريد الجماع اوكي لوكينج از ذا فيرست سبارك ذا ليدز تو الزنا جاست لايك يو نو كيسينج يور وايف ليدز تو وات از ذا فيرست سبارك ذا ليدز تو انتيماسي انتيماسي رايت نعم سو يعني اتس اولويز سم وير ات ستارتد فروم لايك يو منشند اند ذس از واي سبحان الله Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with what? Lowering your gaze, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, he said, قُلِّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُدُّ مِنْ أَبْصَانِ وَيَحْفَظُ فُرُوجَهُمْ Tell the believing man to lower his gaze and tell the believing woman to lower his, her gaze as well. And then safeguard your private part. And this is why it's very difficult for a blind man to go and... Uh, and fornicate. And fornicate. And he can't necessarily see. And uh, I think, you know, yeah. you mentioned the companions. What we have to realize, okay, we, the companions are, are our role models. Sahih. And the early yeah. generation of Muslims are our role models, yeah. right? Yeah. The companions, they wouldn't turn to wherever their version of pornography was. Mm-hmm. They'd get married. They would look for the women. They, they, and, and, and society was such that they would offer their women to people. Yeah? yeah. And the women were the same. A woman wouldn't want to, you know, I'm going to call it self-harming. It's not self-pleasure, it's self-harm. She wouldn't self-harm herself. Rather, she would go out and she would get a man. Sorry. So we have to make those means easier. Easy for them. Yeah, okay, we talk about family blocking them. Sometimes we ourselves are blocking it. Look, we all a group. We have groups of friends. Each friend has a group. And within them, they have sisters. No, you know your friend is good. You, you eat together. You play together. Mm. You know, you're playing football, whether it be PS4 or whatever, your yeah, Xbox and that. You do all of that together. You go to the mosque together. You study together. You go abroad together. You do all of these things together. Um. If you don't approve of him, who are you going to approve of? And it's not something shameful to be rejected. Exactly. Yani Say to your friend, Ya people Muhammad. Have, people are scared to be rejected. That, that's not, it's, it's perfectly normal. Yani it happens, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed, in Allah kazab al khalaiq wal maqab, qabla khamsina alf sana. You see? Well, this, this uh, is the point. You're going by rejected. Yeah. So I'm going to come up to you because obviously, You yeah. know, mashallah, you brothers are, you know, big on the social media oh, sorry, yeah. platforms. You're going to get people sliding into DMs and stuff like that, right? Um. <laughs> Subhanallah, I forgot what I was going to say there. So you're going to get people sliding into DMs and stuff like this. Brothers, mm. just ask her if she wants to get married. And sisters do the same. I'm sure you must have maybe 50,000 requests. <laughs> لا 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 استاذ سو اي دينت كوايت هير وات ديد يو سي؟ ام سين اف اف يو نو اون سوشيال ميديا ليتس سي فور اكزامبل اوكي از ا يو فولوينج سمون اون سوشيال ميديا اوكي رايت؟ اند اوبسلي ذي بوستينج ستوريز اند بيكتشرز اند فيديوز اند وات نوت يو لايك ذات بيرسون انستيد اوف لايكينج ا مليون بيكتشرز اند ليفينج ما شاء الله كومنتس Or even like sliding into the DM and sending your pictures to them, becoming a fitna. Oh, yeah? Just straight up asking for when they get married. If they say no, so what? Well, I think it's best that they don't ask whether they want to get married to you. And it's best to kind of like send their wali, a guardian, or send their brother. Okay? Because, you know, guys, wallahi, it's a. Uh, yani, I, I don't necessarily care how you know, righteous an individual is. Okay? He's not safe. Okay, this is why I personally have placed people on my social media. Okay, like my Instagram, there's people watching it. Um, so to protect yourself, to protect you, you endangered others. <laughs> <laughs> no, but at the end of the day, like... If, if, no, I'm, I'm playing, <laughs> I know what you mean, I know what you mean. Yeah, and there's other, <laughs> there's other people on there, يعني, they might look at the stories and things like that, uh, but they're like there to see يعني, if, if somebody makes the wrong move. If they end up messaging, obviously I'm going to find out, somebody else is going to find out. You need to have multiple guys on there. And nobody is safe, okay? Because يعني, if you look at uh, DMing people, even though it's not necessarily seclusion that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked about, but a big fitna can come out of it. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us, ma khala rajum ma la kana shaytan. Never does a person seclude himself with uh, a woman, like the opposite gender, except that the third person is a shaytan. Okay? Even though khalwa, it means to... Uh, have two people in the same room together. That's not necessarily khalwa, but it comes very close to it and fitna does come out of it. You ask now for marriage, he asks a question and then she asks and mm-hmm. I've just seen this over the years. It can become a very big fitna and it could cause both of them. They might be very good people to become corrupted and to fall into a hole. So, yani my advice is, 
if you kind of became attracted to a, a da'i or whoever it might be, to send your brother. And not necessarily be you because you could become a fitna for him and he could become a fitna for you. And both of you might be very righteous people. And it's happened to righteous people as well. Yes, of course, they need to uh, safeguard themselves. They need to look after themselves. But guys, it's their fitna. Women are the fitna of women, no, men, no matter how much of a great da'i you are. And I, I saw, you know, sisters putting on Twitter and things later on when this whole fiasco, this drama broke out. Oh, but they should be protecting themselves. They should be lowering. Yes, they should be. But you're a fitna for them. It's just how the man has been created. Okay? So, yes, the guy should be safeguarding himself. And at the same time, uh, women need to stop being a fitna for them. Okay? If you have a question, you ask your question, you keep it moving. You, know you don't the, send any laws to them. You know the funny thing is? Yeah. Is that when people say that when women say to men oh you should control yourselves yeah. if we have to in this country no. by law a shopkeeper has to keep hidden the cigarettes he has to hide the cigarettes yeah. I didn't even know that you know if you walk in a you shop yeah. they have a behind the counter Ajib. They, they have to cover them up now Ajib. before they just used to have on the boxes right no no the, they used to have on the boxes the harms that's still there okay the display is hidden Mm -hmm. Okay. So if the display of cigarettes is hidden for those who, you know, have a smoking habit. Because <laughs> so it reminds them, innit? It yeah, reminds right, them. Yeah. So then what about, you know, then Allah was absolutely right when he sent down the verses of hijab Sahih. and so forth. So I think on that note we'll end. Jazakumullah khaira. Barakallah feek for your time and for your advice and for yeah. this discussion. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.